Good Friday reflection, I want us to spend some time thinking about the mercy and the love offered by Christ. Now on my desk sits this little ornament which was given to me by a friend a couple of years ago when I got ordained and on this little ornament there is a Bible verse which reads, the faithful love of the Lord never ends, his mercies never cease. And this week as I was thinking about Christ's crucifixion, this never ceasing mercy really struck me uh, afresh because when Jesus was being arrested and brutalized and crucified he somehow found it within himself to dole out mercy right and left 
And as I read Luke's account of that event, there were three particular moments that, that really spoke to me of Christ's never ceasing mercy. The first was the night before when he was being arrested. And it reads like this. When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. In the midst of being betrayed and whilst being arrested, Jesus still had the mercy and the love to heal the high priest's servant, even though the servant was one of the people coming to arrest him. And I think my reaction in that circumstance would have been very different. I imagine I would have said to the servant, well, serves you right. Someone cut off his other ear. But the Lord's mercies never cease. And then moving on to the moment where Christ is crucified, as the nails go in and the cross goes up, in the agony of that moment, Jesus somehow finds the mercy and the love to say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Again, I think my own reaction would have been slightly different. I imagine I would have begged them not to do it. I imagine I might have cursed them for doing it. But the Lord's mercies never cease. And then as Jesus hangs dying, hoisted up on the cross between two convicted criminals, he gives mercy. One of the criminals, realising that he's done wrong in his life, turns to Jesus and makes an outrageous request. He says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. In the bitterness of, of pain, I think I would have said, well, you had your chance to do right, bad luck. But the faithful love of the Lord never ends and his mercies never cease. The night before Jesus' crucifixion, when he gathered together with his disciples, he had spoken to them about the ultimate display of mercy and love. Greater love has no one than this, he said, than to lay down his life for his friends. Now, Hollywood movies are filled with romanticised portrayals of people sacrificing themselves to save others. And it's usually accompanied with some uplifting, moving music. You know, these beautiful cinematic moments. But there is nothing pretty about Jesus laying down his life for his friends. Just a broken man enduring an excruciating and torturous execution. A man bloodied and torn and gasping for breath. Christ on the cross is ugly and humiliating. Now, we might have pictures of the cross, of the crucifixion in our stained glass windows. We might wear a cross as a piece of jewellery. But the cross of Christ is unsightly and unglamorous. Faithful love and unceasing mercy, they come at a cost. And Jesus called us, his disciples, to love one another in the same costly way. Now, whether that's caring for someone elderly, whether that's sticking with a friend for a crisis or working on a broken marriage or raising a newborn, whatever it may be, offering the kind of sacrificial love that Christ offers us is hard. It is picking up our cross and following him. But however unsightly and unglamorous that may be, love is our calling. And however unsightly and unglamorous it was, Jesus' mercy and love achieved for us more than any Hollywood movie ever could. Jesus' love and mercy have won for us a restored relationship with God. Jesus' mercy and love have won for us salvation and eternal life. And I wanted to finish this reflection on the mercy and love of Christ 
with these words about the crucifixion from one of my favourite poems by Malcolm Geit. And here we see the length, the breadth, the height, where love and hatred meet and love stays true, where sin meets grace and darkness turns to light. We see what love can bear and be and do. And here our Saviour calls us to his side. His love is free. His arms are open wide. my life, my 